My last video showed an older prototype I had which was based on a 4.9 MHz uh, intermediate uh, frequency and I uh, used a crystal filter to act as a bandpass filter and I found the crystal filter was uh, way too slow uh, for the system. Uh, the filter, for signal to propagate through the filter, it was of the order of several milliseconds and I have a budget of about one millisecond to transmit and receive. I was also planning to use a AD9850 to detect the 4.9 megahertz signal. So with the new prototype I have, I'm now using a 100 kilohertz in intermediate frequency and I've switched over and I'm out now using an active bandpass filter which is using a set of uh, op amps. I'm also using a DSPIC33F which has a high speed ADC and uh, currently I'm sampling at about 400 kilohertz which is four times the intermediate frequency so I'm well above the Nyquist limit and I'm also going to be doing an FFT on the data that's collected to detect the 100 kilohertz uh, uh, frequency. The way the system works is that I'll be transmitting for roughly about 300 microseconds then I'll switch over to receive and I'll be receiving for about five milliseconds and since I'm sampling at about 400 kilohertz I'll be generating uh, 2048 samples. Those samples will be stored in a buffer and I'll be doing a sliding FFT across the, the buffer to detect where in the buffer I first see the uh, return signal. Then knowing the uh, time I start at and the time at which I I, I see the signal, I can uh, determine my round trip time. This is the setup I used to test my Ionisond uh, prototype. This here is the actual transceiver and then over here is a piece of test equipment I built called my reflector and I'll make another video explaining how this piece of equipment works but basically what happens, my transceiver sends a pulse out, that pulse is detected by my reflector and it generates a, a pulse coming back at a predetermined time. The ionoson transceiver receives that pulse and calculates the time difference between the uh, transmitted pulse and the received pulse and then calculates the height of the ionosphere based on the speed of light. At the heart of my transceiver is a microcontroller which is running the uh, DSPIC 33F which is used to control a uh, SI5351 PLL. Uh, that feeds a signal to my transmitter board here and I've got a 5 watt amplifier and that transmits the outgoing pulse there is a low pass filter here to clean up the output from the uh, uh, amplifier as well the SI5351 has a, another port that's connected to the mixer portion of my receiver so I've got my mixer here and I've got my bandpass uh, filter here for the receiver. The microcontroller also generates two control signals. One control signal comes and enables my uh, receiver that controls a uh, pin diode which allows a signal to come in from the the antenna and as well there's another control signal that's going to my transmitter that's turning on uh, the oscillator that's feeding uh, the amplifier and that control signal again is controlling a, another pin diode that's uh, allowing that signal to flow through to the transmitter. So the first receiver module accepts a signal from the antenna which is then switched on or off by my pin diode. Uh, that goes through and uh, hits a couple of back-to-back -back diodes that clips uh, uh, the uh, voltage coming in and then it hits a MAR low noise amplifier 
then uh, go through the uh, bandpass uh, filter. I've used uh, Hans Summers modules here because I can easily switch between uh, any uh, band I want. Right now it's set for 40 meters. So the output from my first stage goes into my second stage which is basically a uh, mixer and some amplification. So the input comes in, uh, goes through a MAR low noise amplifier, then goes through a transformer to match the impedance between the MAR and the uh, SA612 mixer. That SA612 mixer gets its local oscillator from the uh, SI5351 and uh, that goes on to a set of op amps that I've got set up to do a, a high Q uh, bandpass filter. So I'm using active uh, uh, bandpass filters here. So for example for a, a 40 meter signal I'll have a 7.1 megahertz coming in I'll have a local oscillator of 7 megahertz and I'll have 100 kilohertz coming out. So these op amps are tuned to only pass and amplify 100 kilohertz. The output from that is going then going to my microcontroller board which is going through another uh, high Q op amp ampli amplification and uh, that then goes to an ADC on my DS pick which is sampling at about 409 kilohertz. So I'm sampling at four times the Nyquist limit. The DS pick then takes that information, does a fast Fourier transform, and determines whether that 100 kilohertz signal is present. Currently I'm controlling the test setup for the uh, ionosonde and for the reflector via a uh, TTY serial uh, console and this is showing the consoles that I'm using on my PC. This is the console I'm using to control the, the ionosonde and this is the console I'm using to control the reflector. The console for the, the ionosonde is pretty straightforward and it's very simple. Uh, what it's basically doing, it's uh, showing me the, uh, various uh, intervals in time when it didn't detect a 100 kilohertz signal and when it actually detected the 100 kilohertz signals then it tells me at what location in this buffer that I've captured that it found the 100 kilohertz signal and uh, then it tells me what the approximate height is. This is the console for the reflector that I'm using to simulate uh, pulse that's being reflected from the the ionosphere and basically all it's doing it's detecting the RF pulse it's uh, delaying a certain amount of time and then it uh, sends a, a return pulse so it uh, right now I've got it set to delay between 500 to 700 uh, microseconds and then once it uh, sends that signal back it uh, re-enables itself and it uh, continues to listen for a pulse. For this test I'm going to measure the sensitivity of the receiver. I've got my XG3 connected to the antenna port of my ionoson transceiver and uh, it's generating a minus 107 dBm signal and I've got scope probe 2 here. It's connected to the output of the op amp here uh, that's feeding the ADC of the uh, DS uh, PIC 33F. So now let's go look in the scope. I've got it set up to do a FFT and we could see what the signal level uh, is of the output from that uh, op amp. Here's the display from my scope not sure whether this will come across clear at the bottom here but I've got my scope set to do an FFT on channel 2 and the center frequency on the display here is 100 kilohertz so this is showing the FFT of the signal that's being fed into the ADC of the DS PIC so right there you can clearly see a peak at 100 kilohertz and I've got my two cursors set here one is set in the noise 
and the other one is set at the peak and uh, right there we're seeing uh, approximately 38 uh, dB so we've got about a 38 dB signal to noise ratio there which is uh, pretty good and that's for a, a minus 107 dBm signal being fed into the uh, transceiver if I get the DS pick to uh, do an FFT and generate the data I could take that data and plot it in open office so I've got two columns of data here. One is at uh, minus 107 dBm from the XG3. I add a minus 7 uh, a dB attenuator and I look at a minus 114 dBm signal coming um, into the transceiver. Then I plot the data here and you can see the blue. That's the FFT plot for the minus 107 um, dBm signal coming in and the orange peak there that's for the minus 114 dBm signal so you could clearly see the DS pick is able to differentiate between a minus 107 dBm and a minus 114 dBm signal because the signal that's coming out of my transmitter is 5 watts and the signal that's being returned by my reflector it's probably down around uh, minus 75 uh, dBm so close to an S9 signal coming in uh, I can't use a single scope probe to check the timing between the signal going out and uh, coming in so I have to use uh, two probes uh, because of the, of the different voltage levels so I've got my first scope probe here, channel 1, connected to the output of the, uh, the amplifier. So here I'll see a very strong 5 watt signal coming out. Then I've got my second scope probe here connected to the oscillator, which uh, happens to be another SI5351 that's generating the reflected signal going back. So I'll be able to see the signal going out and I'll see the signal coming back. Here's my scope and uh, right now I've got uh, channel 2 is the purple channel here which is the uh, the return signal that's going to show the return signal and channel 1 which is the yellow trace is going to show the transmitted signal and my scope is set to trigger on channel 1 and uh, it's set right now to 500 microseconds per division and I'm going to go and enable a single trace so it's only going to capture one single sweep and I'm going to go ahead and enable the uh, ionosond uh, system here so there we go so there you can see it may not be quite clear but you can see the transmitted signal there and you could see the return signal and I'm going to go and uh, uh, measure this and I'll zoom in and I'll show what the uh, the actual measurements are so right here I've got my cursor set to the start of the transmitted signal and the start of the return signal so that's actually showing the round trip time of the signal and right here it's showing that it's uh, 952 microseconds so now I've got my cursors here measuring the duration of the transmitted pulse and it's showing here that that's uh, 308 microseconds so I have a pulse duration here of 308 and uh, it took uh, about uh, 900, 900 microseconds for the signal to come back and there's a difference of about uh, 600 microseconds so if we come over and we look at the, the delay that's generated by my reflector you'll see that it, uh, it has in fact generated a delay of 600 microseconds so as you can see the uh, the Inosan system is is working in theory now it's just a matter of uh, seeing whether it's going to work in practice anyway that concludes the video thanks for watching